Good morning. Hey, as we study the Bible, what do we do when we come to a passage that we don't understand well? Let's look at our reading today. Our reading is Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 21 and 22. Set up signposts, make landmarks, set your heart toward the highway, the way in which you went. Turn back, O virgin of Israel, turn back to these your cities. How long will you gad about, O you backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall encompass a man. Now, the passages we've been reading through in this section of Jeremiah, they all sort of have a general flow, right? They have a general thing that's common and the same in, in basically everything. And what is it? That God is trying to encourage his people. He's going to bring them back from captivity. Go into captivity knowing I'm going to bring you back. And so he's got a lot of encouragements here in the various passages we've been looking at. And these passages we've read really match that as well, right? Set up signposts, make landmarks, set your heart toward the highway, set up signs so that the people can find the way back, back from captivity, back to their the homeland. This is a, the same message of, you are going to return, I'm going to bring you back, you can count on it, that kind of message God is giving to his people. But then we come to this interesting part at verse 22, the Lord has created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall encompass a man. Well, that's a little bit confusing. What does that mean? What do we do with that? Well, the Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 467, lists four different ways that scholars have interpreted the meaning of that statement. You can look at those statements. The first way maybe has some merit. The other three, maybe not so much. But the fact is, as we look at this statement here, we really don't know for sure what it means. And it doesn't mean that we can't understand it. I'm just saying that at the moment, we don't really seem to have a good, clear understanding. Then we have some choices to make. So one thing we can do is to just pick our favorite meaning out of the four that the scholars have suggested and say, that's what it means, that's what it means, and we can be definite and dogmatic about that and say, this is exactly what it means. We can basically pick one and just run with it. That's one approach, but that's not a very good approach, is it? Another approach we can have is to look at the different options and say, still don't completely have certainty about what this means, but you know what? We can have some humility. God is God. He's in heaven, I'm on earth, let my words be few. God can show us what it means at the right time, but along the way, what I need to do when I come to a space in the Word and I don't understand it well, instead of just demanding that you accept what I'm saying it means, I can sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to trust the Lord on this. I don't need to have absolute knowledge. I can trust Him, and in, a, in the right time, in place, perhaps He will show me His meaning so I can manifest humility toward the Word. There's nothing that really rests on me having the exact meaning in every single statement, every single phrase in the Bible. That's not the way, that's not what I need. What I need to do is be in submission to the God of heaven. He'll show me in his good time what things mean. Manifest some faith, manifest some humility, and just by faith accept it and watch for God to reveal it in his good time, what it means to us. So it's his word, not ours. My faith isn't shaken when I come to a difficult passage someplace that I don't immediately understand in full. It doesn't bother me because the bigger picture is that God is merciful and kind and he wants us in the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to give us his kingdom. See, it's not for me to squeeze the book and force it to emit answers. Rather, it's for the divine author to reveal to me what he will, when he will. And God can help you and me not to become the high and mighty expositors of his word. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, when we come to a place in the Bible that seems difficult to us or something that we can't have good certainty on right now, help us to accept it by faith and appreciate the things that you have given us understanding on. So you are God, we are not. Your word is not a machine that we can just push on or pound on and get the right answer from, Lord. We know that. We, we know your word won't come back empty. We know you have a purpose. We know that there are actual meanings, actual things you're, you are communicating to us through your word. So we're not here filled with doubt, but we're trusting you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for the parts we understand. And thank you for the parts that at present we may not understand as well as we'd like. That's okay. You're on your throne. That's good enough for me. Lord, bless us this day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, may we go from the word the same way we came to it. Bow down before him in humility. God be with you today.